Hello, my name is uh, Richard Chudley. I'm a consultant diabetologist based at Singleton Hospital within the ABMU uh, Health Board. I'm going to take us through the induction for Think Glucose, which is a program that's um, with the aim of optimizing the diabetes care of our inpatients with type 1 and type 2 diabetes. So, why is diabetes care important? Well, we know from data that up to 20% of our inpatients at any one time will have diabetes. And we know that suboptimal control has an adverse effect on outcomes, morbidity and mortality. Therefore, getting optimal control is very important. And with this in mind, we have aimed to standardise the management of our inpatients with diabetes across the health board and that all of the guidance that we refer to in this talk is accessible to all clinicians on the health board um, COIN clinical portal. So what is very important for our patients with diabetes is that they get regular blood glucose monitoring. Patients need to have their blood glucose measured within an hour of admission and certainly within the first 48, 48 hours, aim to have blood glucose measured at least four times a day. Some patients who are very stable, who have um, control that's via diet or with metformin alone, if they are stable, there is the option of reducing the frequency of monitoring. However, any patients who are treated with multiple insulin injections should be monitored about four times a day. And also, if patients are un unwell or deteriorating in any way, it's important that they have regular blood glucose tests. Some patients treated with insulin pump therapy may need more frequent testing, sometimes up to eight times a day. Or patients who are treated with intravenous insulin for variable rate infusions or management of diabetic ketoacidosis will often require hourly monitoring of blood glucose values. But all of these recommendations are available on the coin system. It is important to remember that uh, the, the monitoring of blood glucose goes up to a level of 27.6. Values above this are often just classed as greater than this value or as high. In circumstances when values are above that level, it is important to confirm this with laboratory blood glucose testing. In terms of insulin prescription, we recommend the use of a standardized insulin prescription chart. And these charts are shown here on the, on the slide. And, and this chart allows the prescription of the different types of insulin. And also there are facilities to monitor blood glucose during the hospital admission. It is important to remember when prescribing insulin, always to prescribe by brand, to specify the strength of insulin, which is usually 100 units per ml, state the device that's being recommended, and also specify the dose of insulin in units. It is important to remember never to abbreviate the term units, as this can often lead to confusion. And whenever prescribing insulin, it's always preferable to, to double check the insulin prescription with the patient, they may have their insulin pens with them or an insulin safety card which says exactly which insulin that they're taking. Patients from time to time will experience hypoglycemia. The management of hypoglycemia within the health board is in line with JBDS guidance. There are hypo boxes available on all the wards for management of hypoglycemia with all of the glucojuices, glucotabs, glucagon injections that may be required to treat hypoglycemia. Following episodes of hypoglycemia, it's important that these events are documented in the, in the notes using the hypoglycemia sticker. This draws attention to the fact that patients have had hypo and, and acts as a prompt that their diabetes management may need to be adjusted or reviewed. At other times, patients may be affected by hyperglycemia. We define this as a 
capillary blood glucose greater than 14. Um, in, in such circumstances, we need to adjust the diabetes treatment. And in patients with type 1 diabetes, it's important to be vigilant for the possibility of diabetic ketoacidosis. And blood ketones may require to be tested. There is a, a hyperglycemia policy available on the COIN website, which can be referred to um, to help management. For patients treated with intravenous insulin, we recommend use of a variable rate intravenous insulin infusion chart. This, in a similar way to the subcut insulin chart, allows consistent recording of the in insulin prescription. Um, there are facilities there for monitoring of blood glucose whilst on the infusion and also there is advice on hypoglycemia management which may differ slightly from when patients are treated with subcutaneous insulin and again these this guidance is clearly available on the chart. Patients who present with diabetic ketoacidosis should be managed according to specific diabetic ketoacidosis guidelines recommended by JBTS. Locally we have developed a chart for management of patients with DKA which allows for standardization of the insulin and fluid prescriptions. There are also guidance there on when ketones, glucose and various electrolytes should be monitored. It also gives advice on how to safely transition patients back to a subcutaneous insulin regime or variable rate infusion. In order to uh, audit and, and assess the, um, the, the, the management of patients with diabetes, we've developed Think Glucose referral forms to the diabetes team. It's important to try and use these forms when referring patients to our diabetes specialist nurses if their input is required. All patients with diabetes should have a foot examination when they present to the hospital and if there are problems with the feet, patients who develop um, ulceration, these should be referred for podiatry input uh, and there is an electronic referral form that's available on the COIN network to facilitate this process. We all know that um, wh whichever aspect of medicine that we work in, we will encounter patients with diabetes. It's therefore our responsibility to have adequate knowledge and experience in the management of patients with diabetes. We do have access to diabetes e-learning that all doctors within the health board can access free of charge. The modules outlined in blue here are generally appropriate for most medical doctors and you can register online for e-learning via the ABMU Virtual College link that's shown on the slide and this is just dependent on having your ESR number available. But I would certainly encourage all, patient, all, all doctors to sign up for the e-learning programme. So thank you for your attention. Um, just to recap, it's important that all patients with diabetes have their blood glucose tested as soon as they uh, present to hospital. If there are any problems, seek early help from the diabetes um, teams. We know that patients with diabetes tend to have longer stays in hospital and more adverse outcomes, but by optimising their diabetes care, we can reduce these inequalities and ensure that all our patients with diabetes have, have a positive experience whilst in our hospitals. The slide behind me shows the contact details for the diabetes specialist nurses and diabetes physicians at our different hospital sites within the health board. I'm grateful for your attention and I hope you enjoy your time at ABMU. Many thanks.